Greetings to all in attendance today. Design education grounded itself in constructivist studio-based pedagogy. Studio-based pedagogy is student-centered, whereby educators become facilitators who walk around conversing with students, posing questions to facilitate decision-making, contemplating alternate design opportunities, and thinking about a course of design action. In March 2020, the world found itself in a COVID-19 pandemic, which prompted design education to align with the fourth industrial revolution and shift to interactive digital technology and online teaching and learning. Likewise, fashion design education had to rapidly move studio practice-based teaching and learning to digital spaces. This move presents challenges for first-year fashion design students with minimal contact vocational teaching and learning exposure. Hence, the pedagogical questions emerged in terms of how can practice-based teaching and learning move to remote platforms? How can learning outcomes transform? How can theory integrate with practice under regulations? What interactive digital technologies and teaching and learning methodologies can be applied to ensure students remain engaged? And how do educators interact with students? Given the novelty of shifting practice-based teaching and learning to digital spaces, the lack of scholarship posed a research problem in guiding and addressing the pedagogical question. This paper serves a threefold aim linked to the five pedagogical questions. The first aim contextualizes the COVID-19 mask project designed for execution with first year fashion design students. The second aim draws on selected first-year students' digital design journals to contextualize and juxtapose past scenarios with the COVID-19 mask project. Against the reflection on action, the third aim narrates on challenges, educators' lived experiences, and their retrospective analysis. In Africa, computers and internet for teaching and learning is in its infancy, yet Sub-Saharan Africa has one of the most fastest growing mobile phone subscriptions, using mobile phones to support learning in resource-challenged educational environments. This has gained momentum. The use of language apps, virtual tutoring, video conferencing, open source software, and digital learning management systems to provide access to teaching and learning are evident. Yet uncertainty also exists. Within the South African context, the digital divide reveals an exclusive divide between those who can and those who cannot access local content and websites. Students with English as home language are at the advantage since most content is pre presented in English. Language may present a challenge in terms of 4IR interactive digital technologies. 4IR requires industries to digitize and digitally streamline operations to create an integrated system. Characterized by emerging digital, biological, and physical worlds, 4IR has introduced new artificial intelligence. 4IR technologies focus on technological developments to assist users regarding level of interactiveness and user engagement experience. 4IR is synonymous with innovative and creating digital technologies that integrate human-centered opportunities that are socially inclusive. The internet and digital dependency have transformed learning and knowledge sharing in higher education. The COVID-19 mask project was designed for execution with the first year fashion design students over a seven week period. The mask project was designed to integrate a theory based and practice based module by way of remote pedagogies. The theory based module comprised of two units, namely basic research and human centered design. The practice based module comprised of three constituents, namely design, pattern and garment construction. The aim of the MOS project was to integrate and apply theory on HCD principles and basic research to co-design, prototype, and make a wearable COVID-19 mask in response to real-world user needs and problems. To co-design, Harvey and Smiles framework, known as the generative tool, was applied, which comprised of seven activity modes as depicted in the image. Given that the mask project was designed for first-year students with minimal contact, vocational teaching, and learning, learning outcomes transformed. Firstly, with contact mode, activity tasks were designed to adopt a role-playing strategy where one student presumed a user role and the other designer, culminating in a co-design team. With remote mode, students selected a real-world user for the MASS project to form part of the design team. Secondly, the first and second modes in the generative tool required empirical conversations. Contact theory allowed opportunity to design tasks so that students could practice the art of conversation and probing. Remote pedagogy removed the socially engaged learning experience. Therefore, 
An open-ended qualitative questionnaire was designed for students to apply considering that some students may be living alone or in self-isolation. Thirdly, with the contact teaching practice based studios, are, studios are equipped with discipline specific tools and machinery. However, with remote pedagogy, the outcome of, the, of a tangible mask, the activity tasks were flexible. To accommodate hand sewing or discipline specific machinery, depending on the students' unique situation, the mask project required experimentation with fabrication techniques such as fabric dyeing, but regulations meant that students might not purchase materials. Therefore, the experiments required the use of natural dyeing techniques and readily available resources. Fourthly, submitting a tangible product and documenting the design process raised concern. Previously, design processes activities were documented in hard, hard copy design journals and tangible products submitted on campus. To accommodate this, a digital design journal template was generated to align with the generative tool activity modes. Students were required to document the design and product development process and user feedback by applying computer-aided design software packages. For both theory and practice-based modules, teaching and learning were offered via Blackboard. Remote methodologies included hyperlinked video tutorials, pre-recorded audio recordings used in conjunction with converted PDF format PowerPoints to reduce student data costs. We believe that students might be digital natives who preferred interactive learning materials to remain engaged. Regular Blackboard Collaborate sessions were held to ensure interaction between students and educators and for the purpose of formative assessment. Blackboard discussion forums were set up to support learning on the go question and answers. WhatsApp and email tools were applied as additional communication strategies. The summative assessment was submitted via Blackboard. Secondary data collection in the form of artifacts comprising of selected student digital design journals were employed. Digital journals were not analyzed, but used as comprehensive evidence to support contextual narration to juxtapose past scenarios with pedagogic reflection of the mask project. Educators retrospective analyses are drawn from reflection on action. Ethical considerations were observed by obtaining ethical consent from the Department Higher Degrees Committee to use selected student digital journals. Student confidentiality and anonymity were ensured by eliminating any personal information to protect identity. When citing the work of select students, pseudonyms are used in this paper. Previously, students captured research conversations, data analysis, design and product development activities, and user feedback in hard copy design journals. However, through educator reflections, students engaged with the design journal in an unorganized manner whereby documentation occurred in various notebooks or paper sheets. And prior to summative submission, students would cut, paste, and collate disorderly material. Although hard copy design journals were structured to align with the generative tool on submission, it was confusing for educators to decipher which activities corresponded with which of the seven activity modes. <clears throat> With the implementation of a digital design journal template, most students excelled in producing well-organized journals that demonstrated design thinking, action, reflection, and iterative cycles. Students were found to be digital natives and applied software packages to compile journals, which seemed to have eradicated the, ch the challenge of last minute attempts to cut, paste, and collate a hard copy design journal. Previously, research conversations were documented via field notes, analyzed in a systematic manner and recorded in hard copy design journals. The move to digital design journal showed deeper rigor and engagement which, with research in a planned and systematic manner that led to design criteria and constraints. 
Although previous hard copy design journals demonstrated experimentation and exploration, digital design journals revealed deeper participation for some students as evidence with detailed photographs. Some students surpassed in applying digital applications to obtain user feedback and capture feedback. It is possible that because students were engaging with design process activities remotely, these students who took the initiative might have had more time for experimentation and exploration. The making aspects of pattern and garment construction pose challenges because student individualized designs raised difficulties in addressing each student's distinctive design specifications. Addressing student queries electronically was challenging. Some students did not follow through with electronic feedback, but some took the opportunity to interact and gain meaningful feedback. The importance for students to be self-driven, motivated, and self-experiment became evident in an online environment. Some students did not experiment with a variety of fabrication techniques. Instead, they chose what appeared as the simplest. However, for some students, the hidden curriculum, such as independence, motivation, and self-directed innovativeness emerged under remote conditions. Unilingual communication posed another challenge. The studio space provided frequent opportunities to communicate with students via African languages, but this was not an accessible communication strategy in a digital environment. English is the only available language on Blackboard and also the language used to prepare student learning materials. The haste on migration to digital learning did not allow sufficient time to be inclusive in utilizing African languages, which may have disadvantaged some students. The digital design journal required that students utilize any accessible CAD software packages, such as the Adobe Creative Suite or open source software. Although the licensed Adobe Creative Suite was accessible on campus, national lockdown regulations and phased in reintegration plans posed challenges for on-campus access. Off-campus access to licensed software became temporarily available during the course of the year, but first-year students had no exposure to CAD software. Educators and students pursued alternative open source software packages such as Inkscape and GIMP. Online video tutorials were created and shared with students for remote independent learning. Nevertheless, the educator had to technically understand open source CAD packages due to student related technical queries. Learning and using alternative software packages needed more preparation, which impacted on the time allocated for activity tasks. Software compatibility with laptops, desktops, and held held devices was another challenge that required investigation through online tutorials or website forums. The design and implementation of the COVID-19 mask project to integrate theory and practice-based modules is possible via remote methodologies. However, educators had to be responsive and consider a diversified African student body, critically think, transform learning outcomes, and apply interactive digital technologies. Educators cannot expect students to deliver historical learning outcomes and offer conventional teaching and learning methodologies in a unique African remote environment. The findings reveal challenges in terms of unilingual communication, which may have disadvantaged some students. The recommendation is further research to explore the barriers of African languages in a remote teaching and learning environment. The digital design journal is a way forward for fashion design education. Regarding accessible digital resources, the findings reveal challenges. However, further research is required in terms of the feasibility and functionality of licensed software packages in comparison to open source and also to explore the challenges of accessing licensed software for off-campus use.
student challenges are real, but educator retrospective analysis foregrounded the hidden curriculum. This paper did not set out to measure the hidden curriculum, hence the recommendation to explore and measure the hidden curriculum as further research. Thank you.